In today's episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a fun fantasy set on the cheap. Stay tuned. What up and welcome to Skill Tree, where we learn how to do just about everything. Now, many of you may have noticed that my set here is different. I figured new year, new set, besides I was getting kind of bored of the other one. And because of the general style of this show, I figured it would be fun for you guys to come along the journey with me. Mostly with the thought that some of you may have channels of your own, be they stream, Twitch, or YouTube, and others just dig that fantasy vibe, doing like a LARP thing or something. So I'm gonna show you how I turned a pretty plain space into this cool kind of fantasy with the stone and the torch. That's so exciting. All right, so without much further ado, let's level up this skill. Let me see here, I have basically just foam craft because that's the biggest thing we're gonna tackle today are the, the stone walls here. We'll get into that later on. So in case you're new here, your memory's in incredibly short. This is what my old set looked like. Honestly, I just kind of thrown everything back up after I got my basement area here finished. I'm, I'm just a basement troll. But yeah, I needed to get everything up and going so I could shoot episodes for you guys quickly. That left me with this kind of flat design where everything was just kind of put up in the background. That being said, taking it down and the cleaning up process I had to go through for this was actually really cool. It was all the stuff that I've made over the past couple of years. And I'm not gonna lie, I spent a stupid amount of time just playing with the things that I've made. If you've been here, you know I nerd out about the crap I make. I love it all, it's all so good. Anyways, once everything was off the walls, I was left with this big, beautiful canvas on which to put my masterpiece. Now, talking with the community over on Discord, which if you're not on the Discord, link in the description below, you really should be, it's great. Anyways, in talking with them, we decided that it should look kind of like a medieval artificer's workshop. So you know, the wood and stone and all that kind of jazz. In my mind, I wanted to be kind of a mixture of like a classroom at Hogwarts meets the fishery from The Name of the Wind. I highly recommend reading The Name of the Wind. Love that book. Anyways, the main problem I ran into is, yeah boy's cheap. I really didn't want to get like actual wood paneling to put up on a wall. It'd be expensive and honestly, this is all kind of foam board wall and I'm not sure how I do that. But luckily I found this little gem on Amazon. This is one of those backdrops that photographers use for like school photos and the such. But it's lightweight, made out of basically like shower curtain material. And look at how convincing it is. Look at it, all right? If you get up real close to it, obviously you know, but in the camera with the blur, tell me that doesn't look good. That looks good. Best part, it was like 20 bucks. Can't go wrong. There's a bunch of different kinds. I will leave links in the description below. All right, so wooden wall, big old check mark. The stone wall, on the other hand, I didn't really want to have kind of that flat, just an image on there. Mostly because I wanted it to cast shadow. I wanted it to have some volume, right? To look like stone. Took me a little bit, but I found this really cool, and again, cheap solution for it. And it starts with this pink insulation foam that I've cut in half. It's an eight foot by four foot sheet, so I just cut it into two two foot sections. And while we're counting our pennies, that was $24 for that entire sheet. So what are we at roughly around 40 bucks so far? Looking good. Now to get my stone design onto the foam, I just attacked it with a Sharpie marker, laying out random shapes that look vaguely like stone to me where I thought they'd fit in. Honestly, not rocket science. Stone walls by their nature aren't gonna be perfect and symmetrical. Unless it's cut stone, it's all gonna be jagged and mismatched and all that. That being said, if you're worried, definitely pull up a picture or something on your phone and use that as a reference. All right, so once you have your shapes in there, there's a really easy way to get it all cut in. All you need is one of these wood burning kits. Now, I already have mine, so I'm not factoring it into the price, but if you don't have it, you can honestly pick these up from Michael's at like $24, I think. I think that's what I got this one. I think it was like $25 or something like that. Anyways, once this thing gets hot, it melts through that foam like butter. Just follow along your grout lines and carve in your shapes. Now, don't worry about carving them in wide. I have a really easy way to open them up. Just worry about getting it like a half inch deep or so. And again, it's supposed to be a stone wall. Don't overthink it. Don't worry about perfect. Just get it done. All right, so this next bit, I'm going to leave up to you. It's really messy, and I'm not sure it's absolutely required, but I do kind of like the extra texture it provides. You figure out if you want to do it. Basically, I just use this stone bit on my Dremel and rounded out the corners all along each one of my stones. I also use it to rough up some of the faces a little bit just to add a little bit of extra texture. More or less, I'm just going for trying to make them not look perfectly flat on the faces of them. I want them to be rounded off just a little bit. Again, though, this caused 
causes a stupid amount of dust, so do it outside. Don't do it in your basement like I did. God, that was a pain in the ass to clean. Honestly, you can get a lot of the texture that I just made with that with just the next couple of tips I'm gonna give you. But I do really love how it came out and my general layout. Okay, so to open up those grout lines a little bit more and give the whole surface a bit more texture, I fired up my heat gun and slowly went back and forth over all of my lines. As you can see, it melts and tightens up all of the foam, opening up those lines and causing some deeper kind of pits and valleys wherever I leave it for a little bit longer. So like on a face of a stone, if you want it to kind of dip in a little bit in the middle, just leave it on there a little bit longer and let it melt in a bit more. Do wear a mask though and be well ventilated because you know, foam fumes and all that jazz. Be smart, don't be a moron. Another benefit with using the heat gun is it also kind of hardens up your foam and closes a lot of those pores, which will help when you paint. The end effect this made was amazing. All of those little grout lines became way deeper and more rough. And the faces of the stone got all these valleys and, and it looked good. It looked like real stone. And before I could make it look even more cool by adding some color to it, I just needed to measure and cut out a space for my outlet to fit through. Cause outlets are honestly like gold in a workshop. Doesn't matter how many I have, there's never enough. Once I was happy with the way that all fit, it was time to move on to painting it. Now, if you've ever done any work with foam, you might know that you really shouldn't spray paint it. Especially if you want to maintain any fine detail because spray paint will straight up melt your foam. The carrier that actually holds the paint is usually made out of like an alcohol or something and that melts foam. But we can totally use that to our advantage here because we want to add some texture. We want some roughness. The trick is knowing how to control it so we get it where we want it. So as you can see here, I'm spraying heavily on the corner of this test piece and then spraying really lightly with the can about a foot away for the rest of it. When you look up close, you see that corner that I sprayed a lot on has been eaten away and has started to melt. Whereas on the rest of it looks pretty pristine. That's because by spraying it further away, we give that carrier more time to dissipate. That and the fact that there's just less on there, it means that it dries up fast enough that it doesn't eat our foam. So using this trick, you can spray more heavily in some areas that you want to see that kind of eaten away rough texture and the rest of it you can spray a little bit further away and get good coverage. So knowing that, I went over the whole thing with a nice base coat of black. This is going to ensure all of my shadows are nice and dark and just give the whole piece a lot more depth as I layer everything on top. Speaking of layering stuff on top, next I hit it with a gray to kind of give it more of that stone texture. This I lay on really lightly though because I do want some of that black to still show through in the deeper spots. Now if you look at a stone wall, not all the stones are going to be the same hue. There's going to be a lot of color variation. In fact, some of them might even be different stones altogether. So to try to match that, I hit some of those stones a little bit more strongly with that gray spray paint to give it more highlight. I also went in and painted a few of them with a golden brown color. Finally, I dry brushed the whole thing with white, which made all the high points pop more and also sent all those shadow parts a little bit further into the background. All about perspective. Now that looked really cool, but I wanted to add just a little, a little extra depth, a little more pop to the whole thing. To do that, I just busted out my little Harbor Freight and Tool airbrush gun and darkened up all the grout lines and all the deeper kind of pits and valleys in the face of the stone. Now, you can totally just do this with a wash. Like if you took some cheap black acrylic paint, you added it to some water and then you wash the whole thing with that, it would settle into the, the deeper parts and wipe away from the higher up parts and all that. And it would look really good. I was just lazy and the airbrush is fast. It's expediency. But I don't expect everyone's gonna have an airbrush gun, so that's it on the cheap. Although Harbor Freight and Tool Man, I think I got this thing for like 40 bucks. Totally worth it. But I'm super proud how these things came out. Check them out. That looks so dope. And there's like a line where you can break the foam that runs through them. That kind of drives me crazy. But from here, can you see that? Can you, can, and no, you can't. It looks dope. I'm very excited with how it came out. I'm also running out of my blue drink. I'll be right back. This is called a high potion. It's a recommendation from my boy Crowds and it's delicious. Now, you may have noticed I have this PVC pipe that kind of goes through the middle of my set. Wildly inconvenient. To make it more kind of on brand, I wanted to make it look like it was a metal pipe of some sort. Perhaps used to heat the royal bathhouse and I'm down here in my workshop mooching off of the heat it provides. 
So yeah, to get this process going, I just draped a tarp behind it to protect all of my precious other things and sanded the whole thing down just to give my paint something to grab onto. Once that was good to go, I hit the whole thing with a primer. Next, I covered it in kind of a splotchy layer of dark brown, letting some of that gray undercoat show through a bit. I wasn't positive what kind of metal pipe I wanted it to be. Like I didn't want it to be just a copper because that's too shiny and glaring in the background here. But I didn't want it to be just black either. So I decided to layer color on it to make it a metal of an undetermined type. Basically just kind of letting all these layers show through. So with that in mind, to give it more of a metallic feel, I busted out this metallic bronze spray paint and lightly coated everything with that. Again, letting some of the under layer show through. That ended up being a little bit more bright than I wanted to, so I went back over the whole thing with a sponge coated with a metallic acrylic. This I just really lightly dabbed on to add some darker texture. And I was totally winging it, but I'm honestly really happy with how that came out. It does indeed look like some sort of metal of an undeterminate origin. And I dig it. I dig it because it doesn't look like a white plastic tube. And that's, that's all I really wanted. To give it just a little bit more texture though, I went ahead and wrapped the whole thing in this cordage. Because you don't just want color variation, you also want texture variation to make things look cool. All right, so we have our wooden wall, we have our stone wall, we even have like a metal pipe thing. The only thing missing from my grand vision are those hanging lanterns. And this, this turned out to be really super easy and pretty cheap too. Now for the backing of my little sconces here, I found these wooden sign blanks at Michael's for about $10 a piece. And sure, I could have just made them out of some scrap wood or nailed something to scrap wood or whatever, but you know what? The amount of time it would have taken to cut it and measure it and stuff, my time is about worth $10 a piece, I think. Yeah. Now for my lanterns, I found these badass ones from Bed Bath & Beyond at a whopping $15. Look at how much like fire they look. Finally, to put these two things together, I found these aluminum hooks for about $5 at Lowe's. These, I just screwed into that wooden backing board. I also added another piece of cordage to the back just to give me some place to hang it. With that foam, I'm pretty sure you can get away with like um, a regular picture hanging hook. Though I'd be a little bit sketched out just because I'm afraid it would pull through. I kind of want to spread out that force a little bit. Now, since my walls down here are already made out of foam, I had these little plates here with all these different holes in it. The thought being, if you put in nails, or in my case, tacks inside of all those little holes, it spreads out the force and doesn't just pull in one spot on your foam. Again, I'm pretty sure you'd be okay with just a regular hanging hook, but this thing seems to work really well. With that in place, I can just hang this assembly just like a picture frame. Then adding my lamp to it and BAM! Check that out! That looks so sick! Like a, like a tavern, or again, like an old workshop. God, I love it when a plan comes together. That being said, it's an arcane workshop. So to add that little, that little bit of fantasy lighting to it, I put in my little Nano Leaf RBG that I always have here set to a magical purple color. Just to add some interest down here at the bottom. Now, I was happy with this the way it was. Like, I'll add stuff as time goes, but... Bam. Sometimes the gods, they smile upon you. The story I'm about to tell you was just such a time. I've been frequenting my local Walmart with eyes on these whiskey barrels for a long time. They are huge and unwieldy and very expensive. Like $160 expensive. And honestly, I just couldn't justify the purchase. Like, I don't have a ton of space down here. But God, I love them. I love them so much. Anyways, this day I'm walking through said Walmart just in time to see somebody pulling out that $160 sign and putting in a $50 sign. Full whiskey barrel for $50. I couldn't say no. Bought it. I bought it and it's now part of my set. Look at it. Best $50 I ever spent and I have no idea what I'm doing with it, but I accept recommendations down in the comment section below. I could like cut an opening and make shelves in it. I've seen people turn it into like a treasure chest. I have no idea the possibilities are endless and already I just love it as it is. But there you have it. With that all together, my masterpiece behind me is complete. Well, sort of. I'd like to add other little elements like a stained glass window up at the top here and maybe like nail up some schematics like a mad arcane genius. But for the most part, I dig this a lot more than the last set. 
Do leave me some ideas, and if you have some kind of cool arcane pieces of artwork you'd like to see up there, why don't you shoot me a link? But all that being said, if you take everything into account, this entire project cost me just a smidge over $100 if you discount the barrel here. And it could have totally been less, like I was lazy with the wooden slats here. You can do that for way cheaper. I'm just saying if you do like a D&D live stream, have a YouTube channel, or like to LARP or something, this is a fantastic way to spend a weekend. Not even, this entire setup took me from noon till about 6 p.m., so about six hours. And with this fresh look, a fresh start to a new year, and I am so excited to hit the ground running. Last year, we saw a whole bunch of growth with this channel, and I'm, I'm really looking forward to see how far we can take it. Oh, speaking of growing the channel, I want to give a special shout out to my newest high tier Patreon members. Mitzego and Offset Bikini 6, great name. Thank you so much for joining the Patreon. I can't express to you how much I appreciate that. In fact, a huge thank to all of my Patreon members here who helped this tree grow. Without you, our tree would wither and die into a little sad husk. So yeah, thank you for not letting my tree die. If any of you would like to help me feed and water this bad boy, consider joining my Patreon. Link in the description below. Also, you may or may not know this, but we've just launched two new channels. Links are also in the description below. One of them is all about D&D. It is the College of Lore. And the other one, Let Me Tell You a Story, is all about, well, us telling you a story. It's lightly animated and great for background while you're working on some of these skills. It would mean just everything to me if you went and checked those out too. And finally, of course, if there's anything you'd like to see me do on this channel, why don't you leave it in the comment section below and I will add it to the list here. All right, well, I better get going. There's been like a really soft tapping coming from the inside of my barrel. And I'm wondering if it's haunted and that's why they've reduced the price so much. Wish me luck and as always, keep leveling up. You stuck around all the way to the end credits? That is amazing. If you like this episode, you're probably gonna love one of these ones down here. Oh my God, I'm excited to see which one you pick. Go ahead, push one, I'm so excited. Well, don't leave me waiting, push it. Ah, 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 spilling.